What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to tell you why I don't quarantine fish. Before we get into that though, if you're new to the channel, I put out a video every Friday at 4 p.m. UK time with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So if that's your goal, have a think about subscribing. Right, let's take a look. First up then, many people will tell you you should quarantine all fish before they go in your tank. Fish come in from the wild where there are parasites aplenty and with the turnover of fish going through your local fish shop it's inevitable they'll pass diseases between each other. So every time you introduce a new fish into your tank you run the risk of introducing a disease and losing all of your existing stock. Now I don't dispute that rationale and I don't underestimate the possibility of introducing new disease and I'm certainly not encouraging cutting corners when looking after fish. You don't have to look very far to find numerous examples of tanks that have been wiped out by white spot. But in my experience, quarantine can do more harm than good, and there are better ways to look after the health and welfare of your new and existing fish. And that is what this video is about. Before I go into the problems with quarantine, I'll give you a quick rundown of the most common types of quarantine procedures. You can have simple observation whereby you watch your quarantined fish for a period of time to make sure it shows no signs of disease or you can add a parasite treatment like copper to the quarantine tank to kill off any parasites it may or may not have. You can also run your quarantine tank at low salinity in the hope that any parasites die off while the fish powers through. And finally there's tank transfer method, whereby you transfer fish between two quarantine tanks at set time periods. Then you drain and sterilize the empty tank before repeating the process. So what are the problems with quarantine then? Well, with all of these methods, you need an extra tank that shares no common parts with your display tank. So straight off the bat, it will cost you more money. Now a quarantine setup can be cheap and basic with a simple sponge filter, some sections of pipe for hiding spaces and a cheap light heater and power head. But it's still more money shelled out in what is already an expensive hobby. And more to the point, it requires extra space. A quarantine tank can go more or less anywhere, even in a cupboard out of the way, but you probably don't want another tank kicking around your house, and even if you do, your better half probably won't be quite so keen. Um, honey, I've been thinking about setting up another fish tank. No. Just down in the corner of the living room. No. Uh, but you haven't what it's for yet. Hello? And because you can't run the risk of contamination, you also need a separate set of equipment which means a salt mixing bucket, heater and pump, nets, test kits, and various other bits. And if you're anything like me, the last thing you need is more fish kit in your house. Then there's the hassle. Like any other tank, a quarantine tank needs maintenance. So you'll need to test parameters like ammonia, nitrite, and copper. You'll need to clean it every now and then, and you'll need to check in on the fish every day. We all let maintenance slip from time to time, so ask yourself if you're really prepared to commit to doubling what you already do. There's absolutely no point running quarantine if you're only gonna do half a job. Then there's the matter of what to do with the quarantine system when you're not treating the fish. Keep it running so it's ready for any new purchases. Well, you'll need to maintain a bio load, otherwise the nitrifying bacteria will die off, so that's more maintenance. Or you can shut it down, only to set it up again when you need it. But what happens when you do make a purchase? More hassle, that's what happens. And after all of that, there's no guarantee you'll kill whatever disease you were trying to stop, particularly if you're new to quarantine or new to the hobby. But we haven't even got to the most important part yet, the welfare of the fish. The vast majority of fish we keep are wild caught, which means they've been plucked out of the ocean they've called home all their lives, put in a small bag, taken to various holding facilities, flown halfway around the world, dropped into your local fish shop for a few days, then taken back to your house. And if you quarantine, they'll then be put in a sterile environment that bears absolutely no resemblance to what they're used to. And for me, that is the crux of the matter. In my opinion, quarantine simply adds another layer of stress to an already drawn out process, particularly if you then treat with medications such as copper, which is ultimately poisonous to fish. In my experience, fish are far less likely to exhibit signs of stress or disease if they're placed straight into a well set up aquarium. And I'm saying this from a point of personal experience, having lost fish to disease in quarantine over the years. Now you could say that means quarantine has been successful for me as it has stopped me introducing diseased fish into my tanks. Or that the problem wasn't the act of quarantining, but was more likely something that I did wrong. But it's too much of a coincidence that I've only ever had fish show signs of disease while in quarantine and never in my display tanks. And if it was down to user error, all that tells me is that it's very easy to get quarantine wrong, which in itself is reason enough not to do it. Now I said at the start of the video that I don't underestimate the threat of disease getting into my tank, and I really don't. 
So if I don't agree with quarantine, what do I suggest instead? Well, there are many steps you need to take and they're all based around reducing stress. Firstly, you should of course ensure your aquarium is ready to host fish. This obviously means properly cycling your tank and regularly testing nitrite and ammonia until they both read zero, but it also means having an aquascape that is capable of providing sufficient hiding spots. Caves, holes, overhangs and a good sand bed for wrasses to sleep in are all essential in making fish feel safe and relaxed. On coral reefs in the wild, fish's instincts tell them to run for cover when they're scared. So having a setup that replicates that will keep the heart rate of your wet pets nice and low. Next up is careful selection from shops you know and trust. And this is something that takes a bit of time to establish, but if you see a fish in the shop with signs of disease, just walk away. As that will mean that every fish in that system is at a heightened risk. And when you buy a new fish, make sure you watch it for five minutes in the shop. You're looking for signs that it might not be healthy. So does it look thin or pinched? Is it swimming weird? Does it have any faded colours? Any wounds? Is it reluctant to feed? And so on and so on. And you should also do your best to avoid fish that are a high risk with diseases, particularly when you're new to the hobby or when your tank is newly set up. The main fish in this category are tangs, so bide your time and don't add them as one of your first fish. You'll also need to think about compatibility. A tank with aggressive fish in it is just a stressful place to be, and some fish just don't like other fish of the same type. So plan your purchases such that you have a nice peaceful community where everyone gets along. That'll make for more relaxed viewing for you too. Once you've chosen a great specimen, you then need to look after it as well as possible. Keep in mind that the water in the bag you get your fish in will start to have high concentrations of ammonia over a relatively short period of time. So just rest the bag in your tank for half an hour, then plonk the little guy straight in. And make sure you take care of any specific dietary requirements. Just because your tank eats frozen brine shrimp doesn't mean it's good for him. So research the natural diet of your fish and feed meat or algae accordingly. It will also help if you feed as often as possible so nobody gets hangry. In terms of equipment, a UV steriliser is a great piece of kit to help keep parasites at bay. It won't kill every pathogen in your tank on its own, but it is an important part of running a healthy system if you choose not to quarantine. I run an 11 watt UV steriliser on my tank, and that's probably half as big as it should be for a 100 gallon tank, so if you do choose to get one, my advice would be to go big. And as a little bonus, it probably doesn't hurt to have a cleaner shrimp or two in your tank to pick parasites off of your fish. I doubt they really make much difference to be quite honest, but they're entertaining critters anyway, and they'll certainly do no harm. So there you have it then, that is how I run my tank without quarantining fish. And while I do think that it's better not to quarantine fish, you absolutely have to make sure you can look after your fish in the best possible way, otherwise you are just asking for trouble. If you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next Friday's video, and until next time, happy reefing.